Ladies and gentlemen, I did it. I actually did it. I beat Act 4. I went into the Ether Portal. I went in there. I took out all the sigils. And then I went and I fought the big worm and I did it solo. I did it all alone. No help from anyone. All by myself. And let me tell you, it was not easy. It took several attempts and a very particular strategy that I'm going to show you in this video. But I did it. If you want to watch the live version of it, it is going to be linked down in the description over on my second channel. It's a full walkthrough of how I did everything. This is going to be a more of a guide as to how you can beat Act 4 solo for yourself in a very, very easy way. I don't know if you call it cheese. I don't know if you call it a really good strategy. But what I'm telling you is anyone can do this. It just takes a little bit of know-how, a little bit of preparation, and a little bit of execution. And you can beat Act 4 solo without anyone on your team. Now, there's a reason why this boss is difficult solo. And it is the fact that, one, he is an absolute bullet sponge. You have to put a ton of damage into him. I would say probably 10 times as much as the Act 3 boss. But on top of that, he disappears underground. And when the worm disappears underground, it heals itself. So what I did is I found a way to get him to stop healing himself. And then you don't have to put so many bullets into him. It is possible to do so. The only other thing that you have to know is how to not take damage, how to not go down and how to survive essentially. And all of those things I will show you in this video. So where does it start? It starts with the preparation. So this is what you're going to want to go into the game essentially using. Now, I'm using a self-revive, a three-plate vest. It would be better if I had a large backpack, but I didn't in this circumstance, and the gas mask isn't really needed. However, the weapons is where things get important. So first things first, you're going to need a long-range weapon that has a very large magazine. So the one that I used here was the Holger 26 LMG. As far as what I used on it, the important things were the 100-round drum, Everything else I'm essentially using for longer damage range and bullet velocity. So this, like the high grain rounds, um, the laser I just used for faster aim down sights and sprint to fire speed because the trade-off doesn't matter in zombies. And then I used a red dot. You don't need to. I just preferred it on this weapon. But this is going to be your long range weapon. And as far as this weapon goes, you are going to want it to be triple pack-a-punched and legendary rarity. So using a legendary ether tool. As far as your second weapon, this is important. You have to have this in the game 100 you have to have the rgl and what you're going to do with this one is i used a purple ether tool and then i also pack a punched it once um that made it so it worked properly and you'll see what i mean by that as we dive in further uh, i also use decoy grenades and throwing knives these are just to manage zombies a little bit more um, and then i used energy mine you'll see why later on in the video um, but as far as the perks that you're going to want, these are the most important ones. Juggernog is probably the most important, followed up by Speed Cola. You're going to need those faster reloads, especially for your RGL. Uh, Quick Revive just made it so I healed faster. PhD Flopper made it so I took less explosive damage. That's important for dealing with dogs. And then Stamina Up just so I can move around faster. I can't run around with my hands with this loadout, so I move slower. So that's why Stamina Up's important. So that's the base of what you're going to want to use. So once you have your loadout, there's going to be a few things that you actually need. The first of which is a bunch of self revives. How do you get self revives? Well, there's a couple ways. Number one, you can just buy them for 5,000 essence at tier two or above buy stations. That's probably the easiest way. Just do a bunch of delivery contracts or bounties until you get a bunch of money. Uh, the later you are into a game, the more contracts are going to actually award you essence. So you can do that and then just tombstone and then come back in, pick up your tombstone after every game and build up a whole bunch of essence and buy everything that you need. I would also recommend going in with three sentry guns. A large backpack is a fairly good thing to have so you can carry more, but three sentry guns should be more than enough. And honestly, that's pretty much it. Shatter Blast helps out just clearing out zombies, but it doesn't help out with the worm whatsoever. So if you're picking an ammo mod, that's the one I would recommend. And I like Energy Mine simply for the first part, but you can also use Ether Shroud to save your butt when you're in dire circumstances. Now, originally, when I first did this, I thought I was going to need the circuit for the deadbolt turrets, but I didn't actually end up using those whatsoever. So those aren't necessary. So you can bring in more self revives or you can bring in more sentry guns if you really want. But again, if you're having trouble getting all of this into one game, Tombstone. Tombstone is your best friend. And then if you need to go in and get a three plate vest or a large backpack, you can just go in and buy it. Just build up your essence. Make sure you have a Tombstone. Die at the end of the game. Come back in. You're going to have more and more essence after every single game. And once you have enough essence to get everything that you need, that is when you're going to go into the Dark Ether portal. So you now have everything you need. Next step, 
going inside the portal. All you need to do to go inside the portal is you're going to see this giant tornado in the middle of the map. Make your way to that giant tornado. Just off to the side of it, you're going to see an ether portal. When you see that ether portal, you're going to interact with it. Then when you do, you're going to open up your menu and do the same thing that you would do to cancel a contract. So open it and then hold whatever button that is for you. For me, I was using a PlayStation controller, so that was triangle. You're then in the ether. There are now four sigils that you have to go around the map and essentially destroy. And the way that you're going to do this is you're going to go up to them. You're going to interact with them. And then in a specific radius around that sigil, you are going to kill zombies. It is very, very simple. You just stay in that area, and if you have this triple pack legendary weapon, you're going to kill everything very, very easily. It's only tier two zombies that you are fighting here. So this part is relatively easy. There's some of the sigils that are a little bit closer combat that are a little bit more difficult, but again, we have a ton of self revives. You don't have to worry about that. And honestly, if you do my method, you might not even need a self revive whatsoever. So now you have destroyed all four sigils. Now, we are at the hard part. We are at the ether worm. So it's now going to tell you to go back and exit the ether portal. When you go towards it, a big giant worm is going to spawn in right on the beach. It's going to destroy all the other zombies. What you're going to want to do. I didn't do this right away, but you're going to want to throw down one to two century guns immediately. Just throw them down. And this is where the cheese comes in, because what you're going to do is you're going to run back to the further back area. You're going to go up a zip line here and find this little catwalk. Now, why is this catwalk so important? Number one, the ether worm can't grab you up there. Number two, it won't shoot its laser at you up there. And number three, these little purple things, these orbs that spawn in and shoot you and run into you and deal a ton of damage and are going to be the main thing that kills you. They cannot hit you up there. One or two might come at you, but they're very easy to kill when it's just one or two and they don't attack you up there. This may get patched, but as of right now, they do not attack you up there. So what this means is you can just sit up there and unload on the ether worm. Just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. But what you're going to notice is that the ether worm is going to go underground and he's going to regenerate health once he goes underground. So we need a way to counteract that. That's where the RGL, that's where our rocket launcher comes in. As it turns out, if you take that RGL that we brought in and shoot it down onto the beach, it's going to cause the ether worm to pop back up. So as soon as he goes underground, you're just going to fire that RGL as much as you can until the point that he pops back up. You're going to pull out your main weapon. You're going to unload on him. You're going to try to hit the purple points because you do more damage to them. All the while, your sentry guns are blasting him with damage and slowly over time, you are going to eliminate the worm. Now, there's a couple things that I need to tell you. Number one, this takes time. He takes a lot of damage. And I would say 15 minutes is probably the longest that it'll take. I think it took me around 12 total and I didn't fully know what I was doing for the first time. So you can definitely do this in like eight minutes using this strategy. Now, eventually you're going to run out of ammo. That's a problem. However, there's an ammo cache down on the beach. So you run down, interact with the ammo cache, run back up, you might have to take out some of those purple things and the ether worm can come in, eat you. It literally jumps in and eats you. There's a way to counteract this as well. When it eats you, hold down your trigger because that's going to do damage to them. No problem with that. Just shoot them. And then you are going to spam your parachute button. So whatever that is for you, whatever controller or keyboard you're on, you're going to spam your parachute button because what kills you isn't being inside the worm. It's actually when he spits you out and it throws you into the ground. But if you spam your parachute button, your parachute pulls immediately upon coming out of its mouth and you will float patiently to the ground. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on! Go down! We did it. We freaking did it. Woo! Solo. When you combine all of these, what are you doing? You are going in, you are going on that ledge, you are unloading on him. When he goes underground, you are shooting your RGL onto the beach. He's going to pop back up. You do this over and over and over again. When you run out of ammo, you go down to the beach, you pick up more ammo, throw down another sentry gun, go back up over and over and over again. Eventually, you're going to beat him. Now, you might get downed once or twice. The more uh, self revives you have, the better. The more sentry guns you have, the faster it's going to go. That's essentially the easiest way to look at it. But I promise you, it works. I 
promise you, because I did it myself and it took me a while to figure out how, but we did it. So hopefully for those of you who are wondering how to do this solo, who are wondering if it was even possible, this should work for you. As I mentioned, it takes a lot of preparation and you hop in and then it is very, very easy. If you do everything that I told you, anyone is able to beat this mission. So that's what I like to do in Zombies. I like to go in and complete the missions on Solo. I have completed every single mission within Zombies Solo so far. And if you want to see that, all of them are up on my second channel, which is linked down in the description. I do all of them live, so you can kind of see what I'm doing over there. And if you would like to see more guides and this kind of thing, I could do the full Easter egg so that you guys can see it solo. Um, if you want to see that, you want to see more videos like this one, just hit that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on, all of that kind of jazz. But I hope I helped you out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're making